You ever wonder what it looks like inside a sewing machine? What all these little dials and contraptions are? I'm going to show you. Coming up. Hey, it's Chanel here, bringing you weekly videos to help you become better and better with your fashion sewing creations and more creative too. So be sure to subscribe. All right, here is a basic sewing machine. They all have one purpose, to sew a seam. <laughs> they have a top thread and a bottom thread. You hit the foot pedal and you make it go. And it sews, goes, takes the thread down, picks up the bottom thread, and they make a stitch. That's what the sewing machines do. So there's a lot of different um, little dials on here, and they, on most machines, they, they kind of move them all around, but they're all still the same. Uh, they do the same job. You have a stitch length and a stitch width, and then you also, then you have little different stitches um, but in truth, I'm always just using the straight stitch. Um, that's why I can actually make, you know, really beautiful pieces just on a simple sewing machine like this. So there's no real need to get a fancy one, although it is pretty fun to have one um, because then you can kind of play around with the stitches and they do sew a little smoother and all. Um, for starters, now you're going to have a light switch that comes on um, and when the light is on, um, some machines, older machines, uh, the light uh, might change. I don't know. Sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean it's on. You'll have to check that. But on these machines, newer ones, light switch on, it starts the gas pedal. So this is, we call it the gas pedal at my school. But uh, this is the foot pedal. And when you hit the foot pedal right here, the machine goes. The foot pedal is connected to the machine usually at the side and then this is on the floor and you hit it with your foot that's why it's called a foot pedal <laughs> so when you have that um, connected and light turned on it's ready to go now I think I'm actually going to turn this light off in case I hit that um, because I've done that before yay <laughs> so over here we have the hand wheel right here um, you want it to go towards you all the time. You want to, get, especially if it's threaded, it needs to go in the same revolution. Now, the hand or the hand wheel here guides the needle up and down right here. It also guides. It moves these feed dogs. So I'm actually going to pop off the presser foot. There's a little black button behind here that you push it. If you can see it, can you see that? <laughs> right up there, little black button right here. You push it and it pops off the presser foot right here. There's a lot of feet in sewing. Um, and then, so then you can see these feed dogs right here. So if I move the hand wheel, you can see the needles going up and down and then the, the feed dogs are moving. The feed dogs feed the fabric through. So if I, I can also, these uh, presser feet, you just snap them back on. So you gotta take, there we go. This right here is called the presser foot lever where my fingers are here. That just brings the presser foot up and down. And that's how you get the fabric in. And then you put it down. You don't wanna sew with this up because then it just stays in place. This, when you put it down, puts the presser foot down and the feed dogs are then able, actually I'll turn this on now, are able, I'll put this, press this gas pedal here. You'll see it moves the fabric through. Now then there's a reverse button right here and actually I'm going to hit this <laughs> and the reverse button at the same time. Let it go, it moves, let it go, moves. And that reverses the feed dogs, which then reverses the fabric to go through. And the reason for doing that is basically to sew over your stitch so that it locks it down. In the olden days, they didn't have reverse buttons and you would just sew it off and then you'd have two threads and you would 
tie them together to lock the stitch down. Otherwise you can just take it apart. So we got feed dogs, presser foot. Here's your needle. Um, needles come in different sizes. Depends on the type of fabric you're using. So you want to look that up. I also have a video out on that. Um, then in here is a take up lever. You can see it up here. This part, when you thread the machine, takes the thread up and down. Very important to make sure that stays hooked up when you're threading it. If it pops out in other spots, it's not too bad of a deal. Although there's a disc under here, a tension disc, that you really want um, that to be connected, but you can't see it. In the older machines, you could actually see the, the tension disc. Um, I'll show you that too in another machine. Um, you can actually see it and it's connected. So all this stuff up here, this is to wind a bobbin. Um, you actually push it over, it stops the needle from moving, like so I can hit the gas pedal help. That moves, but the needle is not moving right here. So look right there. So that, when you pop that over, that's how you wind a bobbin. I also have a sew bit on that um, tutorial, you can see. Um, these dials have certain um, things they do. This one's called the tension dial. I'm actually gonna show you in another machine what it does. There's a disc under here that tightens and loosens, which means the thread is going through there, so it either makes the thread go through more you know, tighter or it's just more freer to go through looser. And that's what, um, you want your thread to be kind of just a nice, even you know, flow through there for it to work. These dials here on other machines, they move around. They'll put them up here or here or like that, but they all do the same thing. This right here is called your stitch selector right here. It is moved separately than this gray one here. Stitch selector, these are your stitches. So if you wanted it number three, the zigzag stitch, you'd put it on the three. And um, this is your, you put it, uh, your direction arrow here. If you want number four, you put it on four. Generally, or I'm, well, with my students, always look that they're on a two, which that's basically this um, straight stitch. And you can also see the needle moving around when this moves around right here. So two, this machine has just, it's just in the center. And some machines, they'll, they'll have like three different versions of this straight stitch. It'll be like your needle is over to the left or the needle's over to the right. Um, buttonhole, that's the, use the buttonhole foot. This have come a long way. In the olden days, <laughs> back in the 80s, we had a whole contraption to put on with here, so that's a wonderful thing. Um, this gray dial right here is your stitch length. And what is stitch length? I'm going to show you a little bit. So, stitch length, you would have either, you put it on the, there's all 1F1, or 0F1, that's where the buttonhole, it's stitches really close, close, close together. If you moved it to 2, you have like a very tight stitch, like your stitch is just going real close to each other, um, which makes it very hard to take out, but also really good if you're patching something. Then you have this, the three, so if you put that on three, you have your average stitch right here, and that's where you really want to be sewing most of the time. Four is the longer, longest stitch that's on my machine. Some machines are like you know, up to five, or I have another machine that goes up to seven. They're longer stitches. Um, those are called the basting stitches um, in the sewing world. That means they're easy to pop out with a seam ripper. So you can take them right out, and they're like temporary. And they also, what, how you use, um, how you make ruffles with them. Um, then you have, so that's your stitch length, your stitch selector, and then you have your width dial that's up here. And on here, there's a little braille, um, thing of zigzags right here. So the smaller numbers are very, um, you know, not too wide, very little, and you go wider, wider, wider with the numbers. It's like this would be a five, this would be the zero. Actually the zero goes straight, doesn't do anything. Um, so that's the width button here. Um, so that's your basics on the sewing machine. I wanna show you uh, another machine here, that's this one. And these are what you're seeing out there mostly now, these electronic machines and really great prices too. Their um, stitch length 
is up here. So this one, and it, I wish it said like L. I think I'm gonna get a Sharpie and write these on here, but stitch length, you'd see it right in here go, it's like 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4. That means the longer stitches it's going. Then you have um, this one, which I believe is the width. It doesn't even say it on here. I just got this machine. Um, your width, so you got smaller, wider. Um, and then here is your stitch selectors. That's like that tighter dial I had on there. These are all the stitches on this machine. So if I wanted number 10, I do 10 and be right there. And then these line up um, where it needs to be to do that stitch. So you don't have to play with this. But I have another machine. Um, I, this one probably works the same way. If you want that stitch, but you want it to be a little bit wider, um, see if you can play with the width button. It'll go to a certain width like that. This machine also has a speed control here. So you can go real slow, oh, which drives me crazy. Um, actually, this, I let, why I bought this machine was also because you don't need a foot pedal here. You can actually sew it. Oh, you have to put the presser foot down, which I love on this machine because a lot of my students forget to put the presser foot down and then you get a big jumble tangle thing of thread. So right here, I put the presser foot down. You can actually, there's no foot pedal. Oh, I have it threaded, that's right. But look how slow it goes. Woo, slow, slow, slow. That's good if you're, you know, really top stitching somewhere and um, you need to just really watch what you're doing. And you can increase the speed. Just put it on the two. You can go really fast right there. You wanna shut it off, you just hit it again which, oh well, <laughs> I almost ate my fingers on my other machine the other day. Then, let's see, I'm gonna have this go, I'm gonna go kinda here, and then this is the reverse button on this machine. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna push this, now it's going backwards, actually I have it on a straight stitch. And it, only, it goes really slow when it goes backwards. I'm so used to hitting the reverse button over here, um, it's been hard to get used to this one. And then this one is the needle up. So this always stops with the needle down, which is really actually great because then you can do pivoting really easy. That's when you pick this up, pivot to move in another direction. Let's say we're gonna go this way. I'm gonna stop, pivot, move in another direction. And when the needle's down, your thread doesn't get all messed up. Now, needle up is this button. Boop right there and it picks the needle up and you pull it off and then most machines nowadays have these little cutters on the side so you don't have to have clippers right next to you um, and it just cuts them off so on this machine you have your tension dial here i always say just leave this alone um, and there's these lines right here it's only on that spot where that's the optimal tension that's the nice medium tension um, you can move it lighter and there see there's no lines here now uh, so that's how that works um, I believe that's all the parts here these trays come off to help you uh, move garments through like this if you had a little tighter spot so that's how those work and then this is your bobbin um, winder here I also have a video on how to wind a bobbin which is good too because if you don't set them up right, you might get squishy bobbins like this. I don't know if you can see it, but <laughs> you don't want squishy bobbins. You want them to be nice, to, to be firm. Uh, now, I have this other machine here that might help explain some things. <laughs> this is a machine that my assistant took apart. It was a singer, and it she lost a part to it, and then for some reason she just took it apart because she does welding as a job and <laughs> she likes to take stuff apart which is really cool now here is that disc right here so if I move this this is the tension disc if I move this right here I don't know if you can see it but this is the disc the thread goes through and when you move it to lighter or or like higher numbers lower numbers that tightens or loosens and that's where so when you're threading this machine, that's coming, it comes, I think you come up here, it clicks in here, goes around, and comes down, it gets lodged in here. This is the take-up lever. The hand wheel right here moves it up and down. So that's, that is really important. Here's the feed dogs. There's a bunch of dust in this thing, and I like to keep it in there to show my students that you got to clean your machines out. So look, it's like packed 
in there. <laughs> so um, you want to just, you can just take the, this, the, it's called the throat plate that's on top of these. You just take it off and you can clean that out. This is um, this is one of their heavy, this was Singer's heavy duty machine. So it's also got a nice heavy base to it. I think the plastic ones are probably not as sturdy on that. But here is the bobbin case. I wonder, oh, I think I'll pick this up here. And you can see when I put the hand wheel down, all of that moving right there. Ooh, right there, it says this will all move in here. Ooh, this is heavy. <laughs> but that is what a sewing machine looks like on the inside. Here's your um, width button here. And they all of these little parts came off, but these all um, had the stitch length and the stitch selectors, all that. So that's what machines look like underneath. They're a really great little contraption. These were, this was invented by Elias Howe in, I believe, like the 1850s. And um, he also invented the zipper, too. So um, I also like to, there's a, it's a lot like a car. There's an axle in here, moves all that stuff right here. <laughs> and, uh, and then the reverse button and then the, all that jazz. So I'm um, going to take it, let's take up levers here. So that is the basics of a machine. Well, I hope that helps you understand the parts of a sewing machine. I am no technician. I've just been using them for a long time. And uh, if you understand the very basics of how these work, it should get a little bit easier for you. So if you have any comments, let me know below. If you have anything you want me to go over or um, any questions on how to run a sewing machine, let me know and I'll try and help. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next so bit.